We were pretty shocked, I think, by the case of Wayne Cousins, the Metropolitan Police Officer, the former member, member of the nuclear constabulary, and that horrific abduction and murder that occurred. But yesterday we learnt of perhaps an even more extraordinary case of a man who'd committed rape after rape, sexual assault after sexual assault, uh, been going on for 17 years, nine occasions, we're told, on which the Met had red flags and didn't act. But an even bigger problem than that exists. Well, Shabnam Chowdhury joins me, former detective superintendent at the Met. Uh, Shabnam, when we saw the, the cousin's case, I thought, well, you know what, it's horrific, but you're going to get one bad person in any large group of people in any section society of life. This case that we learned about yesterday, you know, nine opportunities for this to be mm. stopped. Now, Sir Mark Rowley's taken over the Met fairly recently. Um, he's made quite a strong start, I think, in some areas. How do you assess this particular case? Uh, do you know what? It's absolutely shocking, uh, shocking, but it's absolutely devastating for the 12 women, mm. the brave, courageous women mm. who came forward, mm. some of whom had come forward previously, um, who'd come well, into the system. Isn't that the point? Yeah, and that's the point. I think what's more shocking and more devastating is the fact that this animal applied to join the police force in 2000. Uh, 2000. He got through the net. There were two allegations that had been made against him, one for harassment, I believe, and one for uh, a burglary or a domestic matter. He went through a vetting process the following year and he got through. He then spent the next 18 years of his service raping, violating, abusing and uh, coercively controlling women isolating them, locking them in cupboards, mm. urinating yeah, on them, it's... beating them with whips. Yeah. Yeah. But what is shocking and devastating is that those nine occasions, police were aware that there'd been allegations of harassment, that there's been domestic, uh, domestic abuse allegations, that they'd been reported... Allegations in plural. Allegations in plural by various women. They probably didn't even know each other. Yeah. So there's a pattern of behaviour here. Yeah by this particular individual yeah. to allow him to continue. He kept slipping through the net. He was either, there was no criminal investigations against him. There was no misconduct. Sometimes, on some occasions, it wasn't even passed through to the professional standards, the internal investigations teams. And that is why he was allowed uh, to continue his raping and I his mean, and these were violence. repeated rapes of people in many, in, in many, many cases. Even more worrying to me than that, and that's pretty worrying. But the bigger question I'm asking is there are up to a 1,000 police officers around the country facing a whole series of misconduct allegations. Now, I've no doubt some of them, you know, are, are, are false claims that have been put in, and, you know, being a police officer is, it gets harder and harder, frankly, with each year that goes by, and they're filmed with everything they do, and things can be taken out of context. But, but there are... Of that thousand, many hundreds of allegations of serious sexual misconduct. Are the police having a problem recruiting talent? Do the police have the right vetting procedures? I mean, you've been part of this organisation as your career and successful in it. I mean, what's the problem? Well, vetting is a real problem, although yeah. Sir Mark Rowley will now tell you, the Commissioner, that he has uh, made some significant changes. For example, he's now saying that if somebody comes to notice for domestic abuse, mm. they will review the individual. They may subsequently then review their vetting processes. So that's a good little start there for, for starters. But you've got those officers that are coming into the organisation that go through a tick box on an online process and they will say, no, I've not been affiliated to neo-Nazi groups or no, I have not been watching extreme pornography. And if they tick those boxes, it's not necessarily that uh, the organisation will then scrutinise that and robustly check that. So I'm hoping now that that will change. And remember, these aren't just about new recruits. Garrick, Carrick had been here for 22 years. Mm. There are officers sitting within this organisation that will have the same traits personality, behaviours, red, red flag behaviours, who have been embedded in a toxic culture 
across policing that will have a real difficulty changing their mindsets. They may be within that process of those investigations. And I hope, I hope they're exposed, they're investigated and they're kicked out of the organisation. No, not all thousand, but that's a lot of officers. Some of those, across. I mean, some of those, and I'm not trying to defend bad behaviour, but some of the people that are up on charges of misconduct are WhatsApp chat groups where sometimes police officers, police officers display a slightly dark humour, you know, given you know yourself how horrible the job can be. It's difficult to differentiate, isn't it, between laddish banter that's, that doesn't look acceptable, looks horrible, and actual misconduct. Well, there's a big difference between dark humour and the WhatsApp groups. If you look at the Charing Cross WhatsApp groups, yeah. for example... Yeah, I wasn't officers, defending it. No, 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 I know. Of course we have a dark humour, yeah. because... I can tell you that I used to go home sometimes in tears. It would take me a long time to get to sleep because of the fact that some of the stuff that you were dealing with, when you're mm. dealing mm. with, you know, triple murders yeah. or shootings or, you know, critical yeah. incidents and, yeah. and violence against women and stuff like that, you are going home and you're then trying to debrief yourself. I remember having some banter and some humour yeah. and I'm not proud of some of the things that I was in, uh, involved in because I could, should have spoken but out. But it's a stressful environment. It's a stressful environment, but that's not an excuse to use. I mean, he had the name, if I can use it, mm. Bastard Dave. Yeah. That, you know, the yeah. Met saying, oh, it wasn't connected to criminality. He had red flag behaviours. He displayed them no, no, and they, you ignored them. The Met have failed on this, and that is absolutely right. I mean, you were part of it. Did you see that kind of behaviour? Was it, were you subjected to that kind of behaviour by colleagues? Look, I was subjected to a lot of banter, yeah. banter, okay. as we say. Um, there was but stuff you could live with? Yes, yeah, stuff that I could live with, stuff that I dealt with, stuff yeah. that I actually just brushed under the carpet. Yeah. Some stuff I challenged. I challenged significantly in my service. I was a whistleblower. That made my mm. life very difficult. That makes life very difficult for officers now who want to call out these type of officers who misbehave, who are corrupt, who are go over the top, whose dark humour, whose dry sense of humour oversteps the mark, but they don't have the courage to do it because they're not supported by the organisation, mm. because those whistleblowers fear that they're going to be subjected to victimisation themselves. One of the things I try to do on this show isn't just to highlight what the problems are, but to try and think of a way we can solve them. You know, I can see maybe a lot of talented people don't want to join the police anymore. They see it as being a very, very difficult job. I also suspect that some of this misbehaviour is more common in society as a whole yeah. than it was perhaps at the time when you joined the Met. Can you think of anything we can do to try and get a higher calibre of person operating in our police forces? Well, I think that people that come into the organisation know they're going to be um, subject to more scrutiny than the average member of the public. However, they are the average member of the public before they join. Mm. They know. These are people that mm. are made up of, you know, society and community. When you come into policing, yes, know that you can have a sense of humour, know that you can behave in a certain way, but also understand that you are a professional person. You are there to serve the public. You are there to protect the public. You're there to protect victims of crime, yep. domestic be all those sorts of things and therefore you have got to have a certain level of professionalism about you so you've got to know when you come into the organization some of the behaviors that you had and we all have biases you have them i have them you probably have them a lot more than i do but oh fact, god i'm not going to let you get away with that <laughs> but keep I'm going just, just saying it how it is um but my point is that we all have biases and at times you've got to understand when is the right time for you to actually say do you know what I've got to be impartial in this. Police officers are there, are there to be impartial Can and to protect improve? the public. I, I want it to improve, but let me be honest with you. You say so, Mark Rowley's been in post since September yeah. last year. He was a former Metropolitan Police Officer. He was the Assistant Commissioner, or the Deputy Assistant Commissioner of Counterterrorism. Mm -hmm. So he knows some of the challenges. But I have to give him some credit and we have to give him time to actually change the culture of the organisation. It's going to be tough because he's got to start with the leadership at the top of the tree and from the managers at the, on the, the ground level. Because the fish rots from the head down. It rots from the head down, but the fact is you've also got managers that also protect uh, those perpetrators, and that has got to stop, mm. and that is part of the culture that has to stop. Chairman Chowdhury, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Not an easy one, that. No, there are no quick, obvious, easy answers or solutions.